Um, first of all, thanks for the uh, organizers' uh, invitation, and I'm very pleased to uh, introduce our recent work on uh, big data analytics. So the topic is uh, multi-stage big analytics for systems that uh, consist of several subsystems. Okay. So here's the outline. I will talk about the challenges for uh, big data analytics, and uh, then I will focus on one of the specific challenges, that is the complex systems, and uh, uh, our framework and methodology and our ongoing works. <coughs> so uh, I think everyone knows now it's a big data arrow, and uh, every day we have a lot of data generated, and the most from all the different sectors in our uh, work, life, and also the uh, uh, society. And big data now also uh, has been taking a central role in our uh, uh, economy and uh, society, mainly because of we have advancements in the technologies right, for collecting data, for processing data, and also for the algorithms uh, of analyzing the data. And also many or more and more organizations, industry companies start um, adopting the big data strategies. So we have actually a lot of uh, requests from, I mean, Hong Kong, okay, from industry companies from organizations. And uh, the, the whole thing for the big data part, I mean, uh, uh, the central uh, part is the big data an and analytics. So I'll actually focus on the big data analytics. And this is a general uh, procedure. And uh, we have collected data. And uh, then with uh, all the different kinds of data, then actually we uh, use big data analytics methods based on uh, uh, machine learning, data mining, uh, statistical modeling, and then we'll be able to find the hidden knowledge uh, by building the uh, models like classification, clustering, regression, and finally, actually, we can uh, apply them to the different applications, meaning classify into uh, prediction and recommendation and also the uh, decision making. So this actually can help us to save the cost or uh, improve the quality of our products and also improve the uh, quality of our decision making. Okay, so this is a general idea. And we have been working with, uh, I mentioned, in different sectors. For example, we have been working on the uh, traffic analysis. It's not only for uh, uh, monitoring and detecting the traffic condition for a single row, but we also uh, uh, mining the uh, correlations of, uh, con uh, of the congestions. So once you know a road is congested, and after, say, 10 minutes, what other roads actually will be congested. So that actually is uh, our recent work. And, but now we just do the, uh, the two adjacent roads. So we haven't seen works on you know, a given set of any traffic roads. So we have been working with Hong Kong uh, Google One Company for uh, for intelligent, uh, intelligent uh, uh, demand dispatching system. So this is a typical example that we have to use data-driven approach because it's very difficult to model. It's dynamic and the drivers and the customers are very much uh, autonomous in making the decisions. So we have the uh, <coughs> uh, historical data and then we will be able to uh, decide whether it's uh, predictable for an uh, order to be responsed or how much time, I mean the response time. And then based on this kind of uh, analysis, we can build a platform for intelligently dispatch the uh, demands. And for Hong Kong Airport, we also uh, been working with it uh, for uh, optimizing the uh, resources. Uh, 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 everyone knows that uh, you know, every day the airport has about you know, more than 2,000 airplanes landed. Right? And each airplane need to you know, uh, signed a gate. And before they have a uh, uh, optimization scheduler, and every day they produce an initial schedule. But, I mean, due to different kind of unpredictable events like a delay weather, so they need to change the schedule manually, okay, for example, for over uh, probably uh, 800 times. So we actually use the historical data, try to come out with the initial schedule that uh, they will probably modify 300 times or 500 times. That is for the, uh, the, the landing gates assignment. And they also have the baggage claim uh, belts. And currently, there's no software. It's totally done by the menu. Uh, then we also use uh, data and then to do the uh, balancing. 
And also for human mobility, we have a lot of Wi-Fi data. And uh, how can you use the data to um, model and predict uh, uh, the trajectory, I mean the moving trajectory of people, and how can you determine whether they come as a group or as an individual, and what are actually correlations between the shops the customers actually you know, visit. And then, then you, can, you can do some targeted marketing, you can decide the, uh, the shop uh, shop uh, uh, layout in the in the shopping mall. So we have all different kind of uh, applications here, and uh, this uh, is only a small example. In our university, we have uh, um, application from all different faculties and uh, uh, departments like uh, hotel management, like design, like health health uh, care, nursing, uh, optometry. So um, we just set up this uh, uh, we call university research facility in big data. And the main purpose is that, that the university invests um, the, uh, the money for building a platform consists of the, uh, the servers, uh, a GPU, CPU servers, and storage, and to help the, the uh, professor from different departments and work together. And most of the uh, big data analytics actually are across uh, domain and multidisciplinary. So uh, uh, we have uh, the four different objectives. First of all, uh, infrastructure support and building the tools to support different people and then cross-campus collaboration and also for partnership with uh, external uh, parties. And finally, we have we organize uh, training workshops and seminars. And we also have our uh, uh, framework for doing the big data and analytics. So, so far we have uh, collected uh, uh, different kinds of uh, data, I mean, from, from our collaborators. And uh, then our tasks will be starting from the uh, data pre-processing and uh, also uh, for the uh, future learning and then for uh, building the models and then for different kind of tasks. And then for applications, I just mentioned this for airport resource management and this for uh, demand supply management and for education and analytics. And uh, this also work with uh, Hong Kong police for cyber security, you know, cyber crimes. How can you find the patterns of a social, a social websites of the cr uh, criminals? And uh, the smart manufacturing, I mean like uh, intelligent uh, industry manufacturing, uh, they have machines that uh, uh, before they need to use menu to control, for example, uh, the machines for dye our clothes. So what's the temperature, what's the color, and how much time, what's, you know. So uh, start embedding the sensors, collecting the data, and then uh, do the automatic control. And uh, we are actually working on different uh, tasks like data management, uh, data preprocessing, feature learning, model optimization. We also currently uh, recently work on the data sharing uh, because many parties hold the data, but they need other people's data, but they don't want to, you know, uh, leak their, uh, you know, privacy or things. So it's any way to have a, a data sharing mechanism. So we just use the blockchain and to have a distributed uh, sharing platform. So this is our current, current uh, framework of doing. And we have been working on different uh, uh, research topics, tackling the uh, challenges, like how can we uh, do the sense, smart sensing and then uh, uh, collect of the data for different uh, uh, application. For example, in Hong Kong Airport, the most uh, difficult part is for them to collect the data. They have some data, but the data actually are not complete. So they have to uh, deploy more sensors or ask more people man, uh, to, to, to collect the data. So this is a big task, I think. And once we have the data, then how can we know the data is use useful? So uh, a formal method is for determining whether collected data is useful or not. And um, then uh, multi-source cross-domain data fusion because many of the applications rely on data not only from a single source, they're from different you know, uh, domains, different sources. And how can you integrate, how can you fuse them at diff what levels? Uh, you, you, you fuse them at the feature level or you fuse them at a the model level or you combine uh, both of them. And uh, another one is a multi-stage analytics for complex systems. Um, actually, this is today I, I will focus on. So uh, current work, I think, uh, uh, if you if you if you uh, read the papers, most of the, the uh, research on big data analytics focus on the single stage. We call it just a system 
that uh, is treated as an atomic entity. So the system itself cannot be decomposed into components or subsystems. And all the data actually uh, will be considered ready when you do the uh, uh, data analytics. And uh, so they, they, they don't have to consider the uh, interdependencies or correlations between the different uh, components. And uh, uh, they're also not applicable if some of components have the data, some other components do not have the data, right? Because they're generated asynchronously or they don't want to contribute much data to you due to the privacy concerns. But in practice, actually, we have many systems uh, uh, we call it here is we call it a complex system, but may, may have different interpretation for different research field. So here we say a complex system is a system consists of several subsystems. I'll give you an example of education and analytics. So people mostly can do teaching and analytics and can do the uh, learning and analytics. And there's another subsystem called the, the, the facility, campus facility. So if you actually want to study individual subsystems, they have different sub objectives, right? But Altogether, they contribute to the whole university's education quality. So, how can we have the the big data analytics actually for such a uh, you know composite system? Is our main concern. So, we propose the uh, we call the multi-stage big data, and the multi-stage is simply said that uh, for each subsystem, if we uh, uh, do this big data analytics, we consider it as a stage, right? So you have different subsystems, and each subsystem you study, you do all different data analytics, uh, feature learning, and then you have a stage one, and stage two, and stage three. And then you have different kinds of relationship between the stages. You can have the sequential, just like uh, this one first, and this one second, this one third, or you can have the parallel that uh, all of them work together, but they interact with each other, right? And the uh, last one, you can have a system actually is hybrid, consisting of both sequential and the parallel uh, interactions among the uh, subsystems. So we actually argue the uh, analysis on each subsystem can be considered as a stage, and uh, the overall uh, big data analytics should be um, the joint, jointly done by you know, uh, using the relationship between the subsystems. So uh, that's actually what we call the big uh, multi-stage big data analytics. The, the main purpose is to do the joint modeling and uh, the joint uh, an analysis. And so the advantage or the benefit is it can improve analytic performance of individual subsystems by making use of the, the information of some other systems. And also you can achieve system-wide objectives. And before probably, you know, we just consider subsystems, so we, we don't consider the overall uh, system objective. And uh, uh, the challenges for doing this uh, multi-stage uh, joint analytics, actually many come from the, uh, they have different kind of requirements of the uh, subsystems. As I said, they have different relationships, right? And also uh, they have different kind of uh, uh, dependencies, like correlations. So how can we, uh, you know, uh, uh, study the different requirements on different type of complex systems and also their relationships to jointly model the system with the subsystems. This is the main uh, uh, challenge actually we have to face. And, and then we come up with the framework starting with the data collection. So we call the joint data collection. That means well, the data uh, of different subsystems that can be uh, collected or selected jointly considering uh, different sub objectives or uh, according to um, uh, the, uh, the objective function learned in, in previous uh, uh, subsystems or sub uh, stages, then we get the feedback and then come back to improve the uh, data collection or selection for, you know, uh, for this uh, stage of analytics. And then we also have a model layer, then mostly how can we do the joint feature learning, right? And how can you do the joint model learning? So we also have a dependency guided. And you know the correlation between different data sets of different subsystems. And how can you, how can you learn the representation or, or learn the uh, feature uh, uh, vector and of all different systems? And um, how can you have multi-stage jointly representation learning? And then uh, for the model learning also, how can we have uh, build the uh, models together or combine different models to build the, the system, the global uh, uh, models. So this is uh, 
over from our country, we study two applications. One is the teaching and learning. Uh, another one is the food supply chain. So teaching and learning mostly are parallel, uh, parallel uh, uh, configurations. So you have teaching and learning, and then they all work together at the same time. But for the food supply chain, and we studied food safety, and it consists of different uh, uh, partners, starting from the farmer and from the manufacturer, transportation, warehousing, and then to the customers. So they are kind of a sequential. So how can you actually study the joint uh, analytics? And uh, uh, this is mostly uh, <coughs> the machine learning uh, techniques actually we have, we have been using for this. For the joint data collection, we use distributed learning, uh, matrix factorization by making use of the uh, uh, correlation among the data. And for the uh, future learning, we actually can transfer the knowledge of one learning the future from one data set and then two learning the features of another uh, data set. So we actually use deep transfer learning or we use the feedback enhanced uh, RIM methods. And for the model learning, and we use uh, correlation matrix learning and the sequential co optimization. I just give you an uh, example of our current uh, uh, ongoing work. So for the joint data collection, we actually uh, work on the training data sample selection of different uh, subsystems by considering the uh, multi-stage data relationship or dependencies. And for the joint future learning, and we work on a, a, a network uh, a representation. Uh, we, we, uh, before uh, network representation uh, is actually considered only the structure of the network, but we actually consider more about the uh, structure form of some of the communities. So how can we actually learn the representation by uh, knowing not only the structure, but also the uh, community information. And the joint model learning, we have a work on uh, uh, joint spatial data or uh, temporal data uh, prediction. We have you know, two data sets, but one uh, data set is, is dense, another data set is sparse. So how can we use the uh, knowledge transfer to help the sparse data to predict the future data set? So I just go through very quickly. And this is the first uh, uh, topic. So we have uh, uh, data sets, several data sets. Each data set uh, actually uh, come from for uh, 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 different uh, stage uh, or subsystems. And uh, then they have, each subsystem has uh, different uh, learning objectives, right, O1, O2, O3. And then we know actually uh, they are, the subsystems are correlated, so their data probably are also correlated. So we want to select the most useful or representative samples for each of the subsystem, right? And uh, with optimization uh, of the uh, overall objective function, that can be the weighted sum of the sub-objective functions or the global uh, objective function. And also efficiency in uh, uh, measure in terms of the, the time, uh, minimum number of iteration, and uh, the sample efficiency. So use the small number of uh, uh, sample data. And that actually is, uh, illustrated the, the whole idea here. So this is a computing, computing wiring just represents the complex system. They have different subsystems, they have different data sets. And then, uh, first of all, initially we just you know, uh, choose some of the samples and then use the sample to, to learn the features and uh, then uh, feed it into the uh, feature learning process. Then we actually get the uh, the uh, outcome for each of the sub sub objectives, and the quality of the sub objectives actually are feedback to the original data sets, and then to do the second iteration to select a better uh, samples, learning samples, and then just feeding into the future learning, and then after future learning, and then it goes through the objective learning. So it goes uh, goes through several iterations. Finally, we, we achieve this. Uh, expected uh, quality of the joint learning. I mean, the sample data collect, uh, selected for each of the uh, sub-objective satisfactory and overall the, uh, uh, the objective function also is a satisfactory. Okay. So we just actually do the, uh, the iteration of the following process. Uh, learn the optimized objectives through the feedback signals, right? And uh, then we approximate the online data to object relevant distribution, so we have better and better uh, samples, uh, data, sampling data. Okay. 
And the next one is the uh, community world network representation I just mentioned. You can consider this network we call the complex network. So complex or well, heterogeneous network means it consists of uh, several sub networks, right? So here, for example, we have a social network, but the social network nodes can be classified into like a piano group or a movie group, right? So if you do not consider their community relationship or they don't consider the joint community sub-objectives, and the whole graph is treated just like a single network. And what you learn is much less than considering the, uh, uh, the two separate com sub-communities communities and uh, also learn the features jointly by doing them. So we actually try to learn a, a low-dimensional uh, representation vector okay, for the other nodes. And for other nodes, we also want to figure out the probability uh, of the load belonging to a particular uh, sub-community. That's actually what we want to uh, classify. So the final representation we learned will be the structure of the nodes. I mean, their, their uh, laboring relationship, but also uh, the belonging, the membership of each node, okay, of the uh, uh, sub-communities. So we use uh, advisory training and uh, First of all, we have this, uh, uh, all the uh, vectors of the nodes, uh, their, their features, and then we have the generator, generate, randomly generate uh, the, the, uh, the network structure, and then we have the uh, discriminator, they actually know the structure uh, information and then actually try to correct the, uh, the neighborhood uh, relationship. And also we have uh, uh, discriminator to to inform the community information, okay? So those two feedbacks goes back to the generator. The generator will go the next iteration and generate a better representation and then going through this finally. And if the uh, generated uh, representation is almost the same as the original representation and then we just stop. So this is also joint the learning, okay? By considering two subsystems, two uh, uh, sub-communities. Uh, and the last one is just a temporal special data prediction. Considering we have a transportation system, but it consists of several subsystems. So you have a taxi system, you have a bus system, you have a bicycle uh, system. And uh, here we just study two subsystems first, and they have two data sets, D1 and D2, and we consider them actually are correlated. So they have, you know, the uh, uh, relationship and, and, for example, they, they have similar distributions, okay? And uh, then uh, one uh, data set is dense, another data set is sparse. So how can we jointly uh, learn from the two sets, two, two, two data sets, so we can predict both sets, the future data, I mean, from the historical data set, and to learn in the future what are the two systems uh, data sets, okay? So, for example, this is a taxi. This is a bicycle, and uh, here the data set is very, is you know, it's it's very good. Uh, we have many uh, learning samples, but this one is very sparse. So, how can we actually borrow, transfer the, the knowledge, and then to learn the future data set for this uh, bicycle systems? Right. So, we use this uh, deep learning uh, to do the uh, knowledge transfer, and initially we feed uh, both data sets into uh, the the first level uh, future learning. Okay, and uh, so the, the, all the uh, both data sets are fit into this system and then we learn some more fine-grained uh, features and then we split them and use the fine-grained features to learn separately for the taxi system and for the uh, bicycle system. But when we learn them, we actually use the CMMD to try to add constraints that uh, the feature learned, okay, at each layer must be correlated, so they have some relationship between the, 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 the data sets. And through this, I actually will be able to produce the feature data sets that uh, we are going to uh, predict, okay? And in that way that uh, this uh, bicycle's feature data set will be much better predicted than the uh, using just its own sparse data set. So in conclusion that we propose a research on a new topic area, of uh, big data analytics, and uh, that extends the big data analytics for a single uh, atomi atomic system to a complex system consisting of multiple uh, subsystems. So we can achieve joint objectives of each subsystem, 
and uh, enable uh, data analytics on subsystems with which actually are uh, lack of data. Uh, so for example, some of the uh, star co uh, co-start problem and then all of this actually need the new models and methodologies. So we are just doing the very uh, initial stage and we are going to study all different kinds of dependencies. Okay, so that's all I want to share with you today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Demand of education need from Demand Hong Kong. The analysis of uh, the mainland education need from Hong Kong. Thank you. So you mean a Hong Kong a high school graduate want to go to China to study? No, no. The mainland uh, high school students want, want to come to, to Hong Kong. Join the study in Hong Kong. Oh. Thank you. So what what's your objective? <laughs> you want to learn the best strategy. For applying for our university. Uh, the data analysis, uh, maybe you have the historical data. Uh, the many yeah. students come to Hong Kong for uh, undergraduates or graduate study, and uh, also you can predict in the future, especially it's from Guangdong province or Fujian province, because it's the big bay uh, area. Maybe. Uh, this, this will be useful and meaningful. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's very, it's very meaningful uh, topic area. If we have a historical data, then we can come out with a prediction. So I have this kind of student from this kind of province in China, right? And with this kind of score. So which university he should apply and we, uh, that uh, he, he can actually have the best uh, up, uh, probability, uh, possibility to get admitted. It's a, it's a, what do you actually want to? Uh, so, which is more important than the tools, for example, like uh, uh, language or the background or methodology, which is uh, more important? Yeah, I, I think that uh, actually uh, is a very good topic because different universities look at the different aspects and they have different procedure for admission as well. So uh, we can collect the historical data and then probably study. I don't know, but if you have the data, then we can, we can probably work together then. Thank you. Yeah. He's from our big data center. <laughs> Oh, you mean I uh, give the neural network structure? Yes, yes. Oh, this is just an example. It's not exactly because using different neural network, they have different structures. I see. This is just an illustration, so it's not uh, exactly uh, our our network structure. Yeah. Okay, let's thank the speakers. Okay, thank you.